Operation Pluto, short for Pipeline Under the Ocean, is the story of how an undersea pipeline for oil and petrol was laid across the English Channel and through France and Belgium to fuel the Allied Expeditionary Force for its victorious assault on Germany. Many experts considered the task impossible. So here you see the impossible being accomplished. The pipeline started from this dummy holiday resort at Dungeness, where the bungalows are in fact pumping and control stations. But before any pumping could start, the problem of making and laying the line had to be solved. A steel pipe was thought flexible enough when used in long lengths, but it had to be proof against water corrosion and other strains. Here comes the first length of steel piping. Round it go tough tapes and a coating of tar. Bunched wire was used to armour it and another coat of tar to finish off. Then the completed pipe was wound round this enormous floating cotton reel and towed out to sea. As the huge drum rolled over, the pipe peeled off and sank to the channel floor. Surely HMS Conundrum, as the cotton reel was called, was the strangest of His Majesty's ships ever to put to sea. The next part of the plan involved an overland pipeline right up to Eindhoven in Holland. The link up between land and sea lines was completed the control room gave the all clear, the pumps began to throb, and Allied tankmen rolled on to victory with one of their most dangerous problems solved. Fog, which may shroud the fields of England for many days and nights of the year's four winter months, is a terrible and menacing threat to any aircraft flying from that country. But flames would heat the air, the hot air would rise, carrying with it the fog, and landing grounds could be made clear to returning aircraft. Thus was born the idea of FIDO, or Fog Intensive Dispersal of, as Royal Air Force terminology called it. At airfields throughout Britain, a rectangular series of pipes was laid out round the most often used of the aerodrome's runways. Through and out of these pipes was pumped petrol, which, burning fiercely, would clear the thickest fog in a quarter of an hour. Aircraft landed between the lines of fire both day and night. Throughout last winter's battle for Germany, foul weather was often defeated and vital aid rendered to the Allied armies by aircraft which were enabled to operate by this product of British skill and initiative.
personal welcome from Mr. Kese, Governor of Bengal, awaited these prisoners of war at Calcutta when they arrived after liberation in Rangoon, where they had spent three years in Japanese hands. British, American, Chinese and Indian. Many of them were starved and emaciated. Many still suffered from three-year-old wounds. This man needed an immediate emergency operation. The sunken eyes of these men testify to the horrors they have seen and suffered. The fate of Japan must be the same as that of Germany. But meanwhile, every possible comfort is given to these men who have been rescued from their brutal captors. Jerusalem, Field Marshal Lord Gort, the High Commissioner for Palestine and Transjordan, took the salute at an impressive parade in honor of the King's birthday. Tanks and guns, infantry and cavalry, men of the Navy, Army and Air Force formed the main body of the procession. of the Royal Air Force took part in a large-scale flypast, while below them marched or rode detachments of British troops and locally enlisted men from Palestine and Transjordan. Finally, the men of the Camel Corps, giving a fitting oriental finish to the celebration of the King Emperor's birthday. Thank <laughs> you. 